Hello, John Duff here from Advocacy Club. We've just had the final session of 2022, which focused on speed mooting. So I'm just going to share some general tips uh, and hints as to what I've seen tonight um, in relation to mooting. So when it comes to mooting, the first thing that you need to be doing is to ensure that you start with the correct salutation. So something along the lines of uh, may it please the court it is a good way to open. You also then want to introduce yourself if you are appearing for the appellant and introduce your opponent that will be representing the respondent as well. Um, so the general way to do that is either Mr. X or Miss Y uh, for the respondent. Um, you then want to courteously ask the judge whether or not they want the, the facts of the case. Uh, most times the judge will say no. Um, but it's just a good sort of uh, way of courtesy just to ask the uh, the judge whether they want the facts of the case. And if they do say yes, um, try and ensure that you can give a detailed enough account, but so it's not eating into too much of your time. Uh, so from there, you're then going to jump straight into your submissions. Uh, remember that you've got your skeleton argument there and you always want to be referring back to the skeleton argument. So what you want to say is you'll say, uh, my lords, I have three points that I'm going to present to you today. These are X, Y, and Z. Keep it nice and brief. You don't want to go into too much detail and bore the judge because that's for, for later on when you go into your submissions. Uh, and then you'll you'll develop from there. So you'll say point one is, and then take them through. Um, what, what you want to do is you want to make sure that you've practiced your submissions plenty of times before turning up at the moot itself. The reason for this is it makes you more confident with the material um, and it also means that you're going to be less likely to be relying upon a script because if you're reading from a script, you haven't got eye contact with the judge and your advocacy becomes less persuasive as a result. So what you always want to ensure is that you are being as persuasive as you possibly can be. So having the eye contact and also by sort of varying the pitch and pace of your voice just makes you that little bit more interesting and allows you to present your arguments in a more persuasive manner. Um, with a case like this, um, so this, this was a case relating to whether or not you can consent to a Section 18 assault. So the, the case law was very much in favour of the prosecution in this case, um, which can be quite difficult if you are um, acting for the, for the respondent who were the Crown in this case, because all you can effectively do really is present the, 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 the law the way that it is. You've not really got the chance to show any sort of legal gymnastics there by thinking about how you're distinguishing the case law. So it can be quite difficult um, and you need to make sure that you're presenting it clearly and with authority. If you are for the appellant and you're trying to show, show how you can effectively consent to an 18 in, in this situation, then what you're looking to do is either distinguish the case law or look for analogies from some of the other cases, for example, whereby... Um, the courts have found that there can be consent to a 47, for example. So you've got more, more scope, really, if you're acting for the appellant in this case to show how you can sort of um, think outside the box on this in this sort of scenario. Um, obviously, tonight you've all faced judicial intervention, and this can be the hardest part of mooting, but it can also be the part that can potentially win or lose a moot. So quite often you'll find moots whereby um, both mooters have performed very well. It's difficult for the judges to distinguish between the two. And quite often it can come down to something as simple as how well both mooters responded to judicial intervention. So that's why it's really key to make sure that you're prepared well for this. And one of the ways that you can prepare for this beforehand is to think about um, what are the weaknesses in the argument. OK, so where are the potential weaknesses in your argument? What are the strengths in your opponent's arguments? And you can almost gauge and anticipate where those questions are going to come from. So when those questions come in, you've thought about them beforehand and you've got a bit of a response ready to go. Don't forget as well that when you're asked a question by the judge, don't feel the need to rush in and give an answer right away. Because what can happen if you rush in with an answer is that you can say something that you're not particularly happy with. And then you think, oh, I wish I would have said this instead. And you're having to sort of backtrack on yourself. So what you'll always want to do is when the question is asked, don't be afraid to pause for a few seconds, have a think, ask the judge to repeat the question um, if you need to as well, just to give you a little bit more sort of thinking time uh, and buy you that time there. So that when you give a, a, a response, it's a nice considered uh, response. So the key thing with, with mooting and any other form of advocacy really 
is you want to speak at a nice, relatively slow pace. Um, the quicker that you speak, the more difficult it is for the judge to follow what you're saying. Um, and therefore, that can take away from the, the persuasive elements of your advocacy. So you want to keep the pace nice and slow. Um, as I've mentioned earlier, you don't want to be reading from a script as well. Um, and when it comes to the, um, referring the judges to any part of a, of a skeleton argument, a judgment, whatever it might be, always ensure that you give the judge time to find the, the element. So if, the, if you say, I'm going to refer you to page five of the case of Crown and Brown, and the judge is still flicking through, then they're not really listening to what you're saying. So whenever you're referring the judge to a particular passage, part of your skeleton argument, whatever, give them time to find what it is that they're looking for, and then you can go. And then the last point in, in relation to presentation style is to um, keep the points as simple as possible. So quite often you can think that, you know, you need to uh, include as many words as possible. I think the best approach is, is simple is better, less is more. So if something can be said in five words, it doesn't need to be said in 20. Keeps the argument as simple as possible. It's easier for you to present and easier for, for, your, um, for your judge to listen to. And I hope that those points have been helpful for you.